Hi, you're watching Flight Steinberg's YouTube channel. I bought the Daisy Seat microcontroller a long time ago, and I always was looking for an interesting project to show with this on this channel. Until some weeks ago, I stumbled upon this DIY pedal and synthesizer kit made by a company called Cleveland Music. As you can see, the Daisy Seat is sitting in this enclosure, and on the other side, we've got some knobs and switches and stomp pedals. So you can build your own guitar pedal or a synthesizer maybe. This has stereo inputs and outputs and a USB port as well. This comes with C++ libraries containing digital signal processing code that you can use in your own projects. So in this video I show you how to build this and how to set up the development environment for this. And in future videos we'll go into the details of developing software for this. So if you think that's interesting please join me in this video. Here we go. So this parcel arrived a week later, once again with some hefty custom taxes attached to it. Inside there's a cast metal enclosure, three PCBs, three three-way switches, six potentiometers and caps, two LEDs, two short and one slightly longer ribbon cables, two headers, two stomp switches, one power socket and two stereo 6.35mm audio jacks. In order to assemble this kit, you'll also need the Daisy Seed microprocessor with 64 megabytes of RAM, which isn't included in this kit. The tools needed are a soldering iron, solder, a sponge for cleaning the iron, some blue painter's tape and some sharp tweezers. Begin the build by soldering the two headers that carry the Daisy Seat MCU to the big PCB. Insert the headers into the holes so they're sitting on the same side as the big capacitor on that board. You can achieve a right angled alignment by placing the two headers on the metal enclosure. Start by soldering the form outermost pins to the PCB so the headers sit on the boards firmly. After that, solder the rest of the pins. The six potentiometers are next. Take your pincers and cut away the notches protruding from the upper side of the potentiometers. It's advisable to wear eye protection while giving the knobs this treatment. The best way to make sure they will slide into the enclosure neatly after soldering is to cover the enclosure in blue painter's tape, then push the knobs through that tape so their legs are pointing upwards. Begin with the first three knobs in the middle of the enclosure and put the three plastic caps onto them. Those caps have a small notch that should face the legs. Push down the caps firmly so they cover the body of the knobs. Now place the PCB on top of the knobs headers facing upwards so the legs slide in between the capacitor and the headers. Make sure the PCB is sitting directly on the plastic caps as seen in the video. Solder the legs. Then push the other three potentiometers through the painter's tape and place the PCB on top of them so their legs peek through the holes on the upper end of the PCB. Make sure the PCB is sitting flush on the enclosure, then solder the legs. Next, remove the nuts and washers from the three-way switches and push the switches through the painter's tape in the middle of the enclosure. Align the PCB on the switches, knobs facing downwards, so the switches legs slide through the holes in the PCB. Once again, make sure the switches and the PCB are sitting flush on the enclosure, then sew the switches in place. The whole project should now look like this. Next, solder the two short ribbon cables to the main board. Remove one end cap each and push the cables through the pinholes from the empty side of the PCB. The red stripe goes left. Now it's time to add the stomp switches. Remove their washers, but leave on one nut at a distance of roughly 5mm to the base. Then place the switches inside the enclosure so the switches stick out on the other side. Then put the small PCB that has the hothouse inscription on it onto the switches so the legs go through the holes in the PCB. Secure them with a nut on the other side, then solder them on. This part will need a lot of solder and the switches take quite some time to heat up, so be patient here. 
Next, solder the two stereo audio jacks to the other small board so they're sitting opposite of the side with the Cleveland logo on it. Then solder the long ribbon cable to the board so it's connected to the board on the same side the audio jacks are on. Then on the same side, solder the power plug. It's a good idea to place the board on a pencil or something similar so the plug doesn't fall down. In the next step, connect the board with the stump switches to the two short ribbon cables as shown in the video. The cables are connected to the board on the same side the switches are on and the red stripe faces left. Solder both cables in place. Then, connect the board holding the audio plugs to the board holding the foot switches as shown in the video. Again, the red ribbon facing left. Give it a pinch of hot solder and let it cool down. Next, let the two LEDs slide into the board from the side the foot switches are on. The LED's longer leg goes into the hole marked with a plus, that's the one facing outward. Don't solder the LEDs yet, instead take your board and slide it into the upper enclosure from below so the LEDs won't fall down. Fix all the knobs and switches with their respective washers and nuts. Then turn the enclosure sideways and put the stump switch board in place and fix it with its washers and nuts. Let the LEDs fall into the holes in the enclosure so they're protruding from it a bit. You can now solder them to the board. Now push the daisy seed board into its header carefully. The USB port has its own hole in the enclosure, so that's the direction it should face. After that, put the audio board into its place and again fix it with washers and nuts. And with that, the assembly is done. Don't close the lid yet, we need to compile and install the firmware for the daisy seed for which we need to push its buttons. And that's our next step. Luckily, Electrosmith have detailed instructions on this on their GitHub page. Start by installing Git, which is a matter of downloading the install and following along its instructions. Same goes for the toolchain. Next, download and install Python. Don't use the version from the Windows Store. Now install Visual Studio Code. In this video I'm using Windows, so in Visual Studio Code click on Terminal, then press the plus button in the bottom right, then select Default Profile, then select Git Bash in the top middle of the screen. Next, you'll need to download Zadig, which is a tool that lets you reset the USB driver needed for the daisy seed. Put the daisy seed into bootloader mode by holding boot and reset and then select the dear view in FS mode in Zadek and install the driver. Next, we need to download the Hothouse example scripts. As we've installed Git, all you need to do is to open up a terminal, change to the desired destination directory and enter the command seen on screen now. This will clone all the code to your local drive. The make command seen on Cleveland's page won't work on Windows. We need to build the DAISY and DSP libraries from within Visual Studio. So, within Visual Studio, press File, then Open Folder, navigate to the directory you download the source codes to and select one of the examples there. Here, I'm building the Shimmer Reverb example. Once you've opened that folder, you'll see its contents in the left column of Visual Studio. Now, press Ctrl and P on the keyboard. We will need to compile the DAISY and DSP library, so type in the word Task and then select Build Lib Daisy. You will now see the compiler do its thing in the bottom of the screen. Wait for it to finish, then press Ctrl and P again, type Task and select Build Daisy as P. Wait for the compiler to finish and now we have built the libraries needed for compiling the example code. 
Now connect the DAISY seed to your computer and press boot and reset simultaneously. Then in Visual Studio, press Ctrl and P again and type task and select build and program DFU. This will compile the example and transfer it to the DAISY seed MCU. Once that's done, you can then unplug your DIY pedal connect the guitar or a keyboard and listen to the example. And while we're here, let's quickly scroll through the example code. As you can see, it's quite short. The bulk of the work is done by the libraries provided by Electrosmith and Cleveland Audio. We'll take a look at that in future videos where we will develop a simple synthesizer that utilizes the knobs and switches on this pedal to good effect. So make sure to press the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Now let's listen to some of the examples. I'll use my electric guitar first because everyone knows how a guitar sounds so you can judge the quality of the effects yourself. And later I'll provide some synthesizer examples as well.
So that's it for today. The Electrosmith Daisy Seed MCU and the Cleveland Music Hothouse Pedal Enclosure Development Environment. So if you want to see some follow-up videos on this, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and press the like button under this video. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye.